my presentation on this antisoriatic drug tenefcon is an attempt to present some evidence based data generated on a classical ayurvedic herb known as firenthus indicus or tenefcon this is a single herb product and uh, which is uh, found to be effective in inflammation as you know that inflammation is nowadays considered to be the major cause behind all the diseases almost many chronic diseases they start with an inflammatory process needless to say everyone knows inflammation is body's response to the injury or any irritant to protect it from further damages medical science recommends that uh, inflammation starts with the activity of some pro inflammatory cytokines and in which a particular inflammatory cytokine tnf alpha is uh, very important because other tnf alpha and many others i like interleukins and all they may lead to the pathology uh, of various chronic diseases tnf alpha or tumor necrotic factor is a cytokine involved in systematic inflammation systemic inflammation it is a member of a group of cytokines that stimulate the acute phase of reaction which further proceeds it is meant for the regulating the immune cells it's also able to induce apoptotic cell death and induce inflammation its deregulation and in particular overproduction causes many of the clinical problems associated with autoimmune disorders such as psoriasis rheumatoid arthritis and many other diseases so this is one factor the derangement of which may lead to several factors at several places in the body like rheumatoid arthritis tonic obstructive pulmonary disorders psoriasis atherosclerosis inflammatory bowel disorders ankylosing spondylitis spondylitis and what not now the reason of developing a drug for this is of late tnf alpha inhibitors have come into limelight uh, into limelight and they are making a huge business the business opportunity is more than 35 billions wherein biologics are having a major share and brand one drug alone is share, is uh, taking the market size of about 18 billion and it is growing at a rate of around 4 to 5% every year but the reason to develop a herbal drug is that uh, the cost of biologics like enbrel is very expensive per year treatment for any disease is comes to around 20 20000 us dollars per year so considering which we thought that why not to develop why not to look into a product which can come from the herbs which will be cheaper now when we just screen or when we look into the data present in ancient texts we know that various inflammatory drugs have been mentioned in various disorders like while treating the wounds and ulcers respiratory diseases uh, the lymphadenitis goiter heart diseases and what not so taking leads from some ayurvedic textbooks we screened at about as about uh, 75 medicinal herbs and we screened them in high throughput screening and the best one is selected and that was at the spiranthus indicus which was earlier code named as nps 31807 spiranthus indicus is a weed growing in the hilly regions and its fruiting heads are generally used to treat the diseases it has been pharmacognostically standardized from various parts of india the extract pro extraction process was standardized and then it was subjected into it was subjected into the formulation of a tablet now the present slide the existing slide shows that about 6 to 7 different types different uh, spiranthus indicates uh, samples have been tested and the reason of selecting it that spiranthus indicus taken from any place of india that showed almost the same chromatographic profile it means in future when we develop a commercial drug you take it from anywhere its chromatographic profile will be the same and its marker will be the same it was identified one chemical marker had been identified it is known as 7 hydroxyphenol hydroxyphenolide which belongs to the group of parthenolide compound which is slightly toxic but the presence of other phytochemicals render it non toxic the formulation was made it was subjected to analysis for quality efficacy and safety check and on finding that it is safe by all parameters then we have just taken it for further activity now in vitro activity of spiranthus indica shows that 
it inhibits the release of HPBMC and derived pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF alpha interleukins 1, 6, and 8. Then it also inhibits the production of intracellular molecules, intracellular adhesion molecules, which are the main cause of psoriasis. It also inhibits the monocytic adhesion of TNF alpha treated endothelial cells. It blocks the NF kappa beta, an important factor. Phosphorylation and degradation, it inhibits the release of two different interleukins known as IL-12 and IL-23, which are very important for the genesis of psoriasis. So, this is how we see that it suppresses the production of TNF-alpha and interleukins. And experiments also showed that particularly when we tested in, in the synovial cells obtained from the rheumatoid arthritis process, we found that it inhibits these pro-inflammatory cytokines. The present chart shows that it is Spherenthus indicus, its extract is in a position to bring down the level of IL-12 and IL-23 because it is inhibiting the release and it is also affecting on the TNF-alpha. Then in vivo experiment was carried out just to see because it was initial our objective was not to see that its activity in psoriasis only. We wanted to find out whether an anti-inflammatory drug may be useful in disorders caused by inflammation such as atherosclerosis or ulcerative colitis or psoriasis or rheumatoid arthritis, everything. So in vivo activity shows that it inhibits the LPS induced IL-1 beta release which is very important in inflammatory changes and progressive destruction of the joint. And it is also, in fact, it is also effective in LPS-induced TNF-alpha release in the mice. It means it is not, all, not only effective in in vitro, but also in in vivo studies. This histopathology slide shows that on staining, particularly in case of the cartilaginous study, histologically, it is as effective as Enbrel, which is the drug of choice, which is a disease modifier, which is a drug of choice by the modern system of medicine. So it is, it is tested against vehicle control and uh, Enbrel in, in both the counts, it is found to be more useful. That is how we can say that it protects the cartilaginous degradation in the joint and this is how useful in case of rheumatoid arthritis. Then we also conducted few preliminary studies to see whether it could be effective in ulcerative colitis model. Animal model was created and it was subject to certain parameters like checking the weight loss, rectal bleeding, stool consistency, disease activity index, and colon length. This was uh, produced by feeding DSS. And DSS is one agent which causes uh, ulcerative colitis. And in all the five counts, it was found to be effective. It reduces the severity of the experimental colitis. Then in experimental colitis model itself, we have also tested it for histopathology to see the histopathology of the intestine of the mice. And as you say, say, see here, that while in case of DSS intestine, which is not treated, the total intestinal lumen is damaged, whereas the cases which are not affected by DSS, that is the healthy colon, and the result of the colon used in which the NPS 3187 Spherenthus syndicus was used, it is almost the same. It means it is in a position to bring back the structure of functional integrity of the uh, intestinal mucosa. We also tested it for atherosclerosis in an atherosclerotic model. Atherosclerosis lesion quantitation, we found that while the red, the vehicle, the atherosclerotic lesions are increasing, the drug of choice phenofibrate as against Spherenthus indicus in two different dosage, that is 100 mg per kg body weight and 300 mg per kg body weight, the results are almost as good as phenofibrate. It means this could be a, an effective candidate for atherosclerosis in future. Same way it is tested, presented in other chart also. And we say that this is reduces the development and the progression of atherosclerosis in LDLR deficient mice. In vivo studies, once more, that lesion area reduction was quite promising as against the vehicle because there is no activity and as against phenofibrate you can see that activity is almost 50% as compared to phenofibrate which is the drug of choice. The same way histological uh, feature of hamster aorta also shares the, shows that the, uh, uh, the tissue 
the atherosclerotic changes in the tissue are relatively better. Toxicology. So once the drug is found to be effective in in vivo studies in case of all these two, three diseases, we thought that let us see whether the drug is useful or the drug is toxic because the major identifiable marker is 7-hydroxyphenolide which is a parthenolide group of compound and which might be toxic. It was essential that though it is a tested drug, let us go into the toxicity. And the toxicity studies shows that all the animals, they survived up to a dose of 1000 mg, that is 1 gram per kg body weight. No clinical signs of toxicity were observed. The data on the body weight gain and food take indicated no adverse effect and up to the dose of 1000 mg per kg body weight. The data on hematological and biochemical parameters revealed that there was no adverse effect up to the dose of 1000 mg per kg body weight and no adverse effect on the organs or the weight loss findings. Similarly, we have not observed any adverse effect in pathological, histopathological findings which is already shown. Mutagenicity studies were also studied, were also done and non, it was found to be non-mutagenic in presence and absence of the S9 oxidative metabolic activation with various strains which are TN, TN98, TN100, TN100, there are five, six strains which, which have been used and this is tested by platelet incorporation method and the pre-incubation method. But they were all not very dangerous. So after completing this, we thought that it, let it be experimented for psoriasis, which is a chronic inflammatory condition characterized by erythema, induration, scalering, plaque formation, etc., etc. Its prevalence is uh, uh, very high, particularly the plaque-based psoriasis is very high and it, it affects the population almost everywhere in the world, anything from 1% to 3% of the population in the western, eastern world, in any of the continent. That there are various treatment op options available in modern system of medicine, but either they are not effective after a certain time or the treatment cost is very high. There are mild to moderate to severe antisoriatic agents, the list of which is given here, which includes right from to topical application to ultraviolet rays to internal medicines, biologics like Enbrel and everything. We carried out clinical trials which were randomized, double blood, placebo controlled, and these were the pilot studies which evaluate to evaluate the safety and efficacy of two different doses. Initially, we started with 1.4 gram per day dose and later on we had to increase it to 2.8 gram because some of the patients they were not showing good effect but nowhere any adverse effect was seen. So primary objectives were to evaluate in moderate to severe psoriasis and to evaluate the activity of TNFCON by observing the change in the PASI score, I'll just highlight PASI score, area severity index at 12 weeks as compared to the baseline. Secondary objectives were to elaborate, to evaluate the changes of the histopathology of psoriatic skin and the gene expression profile because when psoriasis, psoriasis sets in, then there are certain factors which are expressed through the genes, though that testing was done. Study design is mentioned here, so we en en enrolled about for this. 74 patients, total 147, including uh, uh, the placebo treated patients. And the clinical parameters that were taken into consideration was PASI scoring, which is internationally accepted scoring of psoriasis area severity index. There is physician's assessment, histopathology, gene expression profile, immunohistochemistry, CRP. The safety parameters that were observed were that the adverse events about which I have just now tagged, vital signs, physical examination, and other clean laboratory parameters like hematology, like hematology, biochemistry and urinalysis, including ECG. In the PASI score, 75% improvement in the PASI score has been seen, which is considered to be very good. Even the existing drugs, they, the best drugs show about 40 to 60% of PASI scoring positive, that is only up to 75%. So, as you see here, the 2.8 gram optimum dosage is very effective in controlling the symptoms on 75% level. This is the photographic evidence of two cases on the day one and after 12 weeks, you can see that the disease has remarkably reduced. Then in the gene expression profile, as you see the chart here, that red and green color, there are certain parameters, certain biomarkers, which are known as KRT16, FABPS and all everything. So out of these six parameters, 
as you see that first six, the gray lined numbers and the yellow lined numbers, the gray lined chart shows that at the baseline, then week one and the week 12, about 70% of the cases, the number unfortunately is not written here, about 70% of the cases in week 12 have shown positive results in gene expression profile also. Whereas in vehicle controlled, not a single case was found to be okay. Then we, histochemistry, we carried, we carried out the tests for the epidermal thickness, which is an important sign in case of psoriasis. And you see, as you see here, the report of the four cases, almost in every one after 12 weeks, the epidermal thickness, skin thickness is responding well to the treatment. And patient skin tissue is measured by epidermal thickness by microscopy. This is statistically significant. Here there is only one mistake in the slide, the case of non responders blue and green, blue, sorry, blue and violet lines. It is not the baseline and treatment. The blue line shows the placebo treated cases and the purple line shows the cases treated by the medicine. While in case of the placebo treated cases, all the cases are proliferated, whereas the purple line shows that the cases which are treated by this drug NPS31807, they have shown considerable response, which is statistically significant result in reducing the epidermal thickness. So by this, in conclusion, we can say that the results of this clinical study provide initial efficacy signal of tenofcon tablet administered over a period of three months. They are well tolerated up to a dose of 2.8 grams. Hence, a study with large sample size to further confirm its efficacy would be better. This is a promising candidate for TNF associated inflammatory disorders like atherosclerosis, ulcerative colitis and ankylosing spondylitis. It means if anybody else, any other researcher wants to take up this drug for the diseases associated with TNF alpha, they can easily take it up. And this is the first herbal drug in India to get registered as a modern drug also by DCGI. Not only this, this is the first drug in India in which a standardized extract, not a compound separately. It is a standardized extract which is standardized for 5 to 7 percent of 7 hydroxyfluoronide. It has been accepted by DCGI for a three year experimental period as a modern drug. The patent status, we have filed the patent application, patent applications in many countries and one patent has, US patient patent has also been registered. The unique selling property of this product can be that it is obtained from time tested and widely used herb of Ayurveda manufactured under GMP standards. It is a contaminant free compare completely standardized products. It inhibits the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which can be shown in the laboratory. It is the convenient, effective, safe, and affordable option. It is orally active. It is safe and non-toxic, which is proved in animal as well as human experiments. And it does not interact with enzymes. We have carried out the interactive tests also. It does not interact with enzymes involved drug, drug reaction. This is well tolerated in patients with moderate to severe both the types of psoriasis. It is a new choice for psoriasis patient, again convenient, effective, safe and affordable option. This is how we can take this, we can comfortably say that the product in FCON, which is made of nothing but Spirantha syndicus extract, it can be a useful drug for future in treating psoriasis because it gives us the result in passive scoring more than 75%. As you have seen, it considerably reduces the epidermal thickness. It proves its efficacy by way of gene expression profile also, and even in histopathology analysis, it has proved it is a safe and efficacious drug. Thank you very much.